Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another very exciting edition of Dr. IMG Abroad. I am happy to be your host today and today we will be analyzing and talking on something very important for international medical graduate. But before we continue, I'd like on you to hit subscribe to share and like this video as this will help the channel to grow. Thank you very much. Um, today we will be talking about um, recent changes that occurred on the MCC um, website in terms of the qualifying exams for physicians who are hoping to practice and work as physicians um, in Canada. So the MCC is the Medical Council of Canada and for the past years, there've been changes that have been progressive from MCCQ E1 says a Medical Council of Canada qualifying exams part one, the words part two, and then that has been changed. That was changed to Medical Council of Canada qualifying exams part one only, and then the Nakoski exams. And then there is recent changes. So these exams is composed of say a four hour morning session and then a 45 minutes break. And then there's a three and a half hour session in the afternoon, which is composed of clinical decision making um, question types. So the exams is made up of 210 questions at the moment. It's currently part one. It's made up of 210 questions and that we have to answer these questions um, within four hours, um, depending on whatever time you have. There is four windows that are usually open throughout the year. Um, uh, and and these four windows generally will correspond to the different four seasons. So the MCC QA part one is written four times a year. So usually you say there is a summer um, session, there is an autumn version, there is a spring one, and there is a winter one. So you can prepare to get these exams um, at any time. The link of the MCC QA is in the description box. You can check it out. Um, and so you can be able to sit for these exams at any particular point in time. However, the exams, as I was saying earlier, has, um, you know, four hours of um, writing time. The exams, first of all, is divided into two different sections. There is a first part, which is the multiple choice question type. It's made up of 210 multiple choice questions and you answer these questions in four hours. Then you have a chance to have a break and that break is usually about 40, 45 minutes. And then you have an afternoon session, which is still in the form of a structured kind of proposed options or answer type exams. But then there is also short answer um, sessions where you could be asked for a diagnosis, a treatment or an initial step, a, a periclinical workup or what you should think you should do in that, in that case. This part is a clinical decision making um, part, which is called the CDM section. Um, it's usually tricky. There's about um, 36 to 39, depending on the cases. And then all of this um, form a certain number of questions that you have to answer at the end of the day. And then um, we will go to the new changes. And these exams could be taken either on centers all around Canada or um, abroad in different countries. You can check the link in the description box. You will see the countries that could, um, you know, where you could write um, MCC. There is several countries around the world. So you don't have to physically be in Canada in order to write these exams. And then, then you could also write a remote, there's remote proctoring that, that, that you could take these exams remotely. So you could write from the comfort of your home using your computer in an isolated room where everything is, you know, checked by a remote proctor um, monitor who controls and makes sure that your room is just free and then you're in an exam situation. So it's it's really um, a time exams. You can uh, prepare for it. Averagely, people prepare for the exams for about two to three months. It all depends on the background knowledge that you have, your recency in practice, how current you are, if you've been to clinical research and all of that. But again, if you're not versed with the Canadian system, it's usually very good to check out topics like ethics, um, you know, psychiatry, because these are all topics that are relatively a little more prevalent here compared to other countries. Um, and the situations are really different, so it's really good to check it out. So, but however, there's been changes that have occurred and that MCCQ has decided that there's gonna be new changes on this exam and I'm gonna present it right to you. So the new changes that we're expecting that should occur is that, you know, MCCQE is gonna change, the part one exams is gonna change in 2025. 
So, and this was recently published last month in June, um, on June 13, 2023. And so these um, changes will be effective um, as of April 2025. So MC Secure has been, you know, getting feedback. If you've ever sat on that exams, you know, there's been feedback um, as we see them right on their website that you give them based on your personal exam experience and other things and other factors that have considered. They've also been trying to put together some grand projects and have been seeking ways to improve the way they assess just to make sure that anyone getting into the Canadian medical workforce is qualified or has the same standard at least and is able to deliver up to a certain level. So the changes that have occurred are, are several and I'll just go through them with you here. So they've done a lot of research, they've, they've done this for several months, they've collected key data points and expert consultations, operational consultations as well have been carried out by MC Security, and then they've decided to define you know new MC Security part one assessment models to implement you know um, this model as of, as from April 2025. And some of the adjustments that have been made is that within the candidates experience being top on the mind. So all of this is based on they want the candidate to have the best experience sitting for that exam. So let it not be so biased. Um, let it not be skewed towards one direction, but they want to make it as you know uniform standardized as possible. So with the candidates experience being top of the mind, um, they will shorten the overall length of the exams. The, 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 the exams were so long, really intense. If you sit on that exam for four hours answering 210 questions, it's really, really intense. So they intend to shorten that exam's time. And um, so they will implement um, improved testing to break time allocation. So what is currently going on as a model is that there's only 40 or 45 minutes break within the part one to four hours of the morning, as I said and the three and a half hours in the afternoon. So now they want to be able to see if they could inc include other breaks because if you went for a break, a bathroom break, you have no time. Literally, it's a, it was a time exam. It is a time exam until April of 2025. And uh, with a period of no more than three hours before a scheduled break. So um, currently there's up to 4.5 hours in the morning section, which is a little bit, you know, really hectic, but now they're trying to see that they bring that time down to three hours. And then the next point is that this um, critical medical knowledge and decision-making skills will continue to be assessed through multi-choice, uh, multiple choice questions. The, the clinical decision-making component of the exams, which normally consisted of about 38 cases with short menu and short answers, writing questions, Will be removed so we wouldn't have any cdm part anymore which is which is really great because the cdm part was really crazy sometimes and you're really not sure exactly on how to write it or if your answer that you give is going to be on the marking key right sometimes it's a correct answer or logically it might be correct but if it's not on the marking key then you know you'd get to lose a mark which was making the exams a little skewed the mcq questions will remain but the cdm which are the short answered structural questions will be removed instead of presenting the mcqs in a single section the mcqs will now be divided into two distinct sections for a better balance of the exams they experience so it's not going to be again 210 long questions in one single section that you have to write for about four hours straight up it's going to be changed a little bit and it's going to be split into two different sections and make it a little bit um you know comfortable for the candidates and candidates will be provided with more time to answer each question to ensure that the exams continues to be fair and valid um, and a good representation of their knowledge because at the moment the exams is really a time exam Sometimes it's not even really your knowledge. I don't know But a lot of people who've taken the exam say it's really a time test. So you have to go fast 210 MCQ questions that are long sometimes short questions you need to be very fast. It is anticipated that exam results will be generated and made available more quickly. For the time being, right now, after you sit for these exams, it takes up to eight weeks for you to get the results of the exams, which is way too long. So it's almost about two months 
after sitting for the exams to get the final results of the exams. So this can be frustrating. People don't know exactly if they should prepare harder, they're going to succeed or fail. You know, all of this have been put into place to make um, the exams experience really better. And this modernized and optimized exams will continue to be delivered globally, even through ProMetrics um, up to four times per year, representing approximately 100 days of testing, both um, in test centers and through remote proctoring. The integrated validity and the reliability of the MCQ part one remains the same as MCQs will continue to assess critical knowledge and critical decision makings. Um, in the meantime, until 2025, the exams is going to remain unchanged. Um, the MCCQ is committed to maintaining, you know, vital work in physician assessment to ensure that, you know, the whole of Canada can remain and receive safe um, healthcare services from healthcare providers. So these are some of the changes that have occurred. If you have any questions and you want to know a little more, please type your questions in the comment box in the description. And um, until that, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.